Today, I'm gonna show you the $1,000 PC that you can actually build right now. No tricks, no gimmicks, nothing up my sleeve of any kind. No, these are legitimate PC components that you can actually buy right now. They will give you 1080p high refresh rate gaming on high to ultra settings. Is it too good to be true? Stay tuned and find out. As many of you know, being a PC gamer is absolutely incredible. However, right now it's a little bit tough to be a PC gamer and it's hard to recommend PC gaming simply because of the graphics card shortages. A lot of you have gaming PCs sitting at home that haven't been upgraded in quite some time. And with current AAA titles, you're probably starting to feel the pain of your frame rate coming down just a little bit. So with graphics cards still mostly out of stock or ridiculously overpriced, and with games being more demanding than ever before, what exactly are you supposed to do? Go back to console? <laughs> You serious? I mean, technically, console is actually not a bad option right now. The PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X offer a lot of value, and quite frankly, they're very respectable. I make my jokes and I kid around and all of that, but the truth is I have a lot of respect for console gaming, and right now there's more reasons than ever before to actually buy a console. However, no matter how good console gaming may become, you will always have PC gamers. So, for my PC gamers out there who don't want to go to a console, what exactly are you supposed to do? So I set out on a mission to find the best bang for buck. And I said, hey, look, if I have $1,000 that I can spend on a PC right now, can I build a PC that can do AAA gaming at 1080p on high or even ultra settings and achieve a frame rate that's over 60 frames per second on average? Can I do that in today's market? Very much to my surprise, the answer is actually yes. I also have a secondary option that's more than $1,000 for the people that have a little bit more room in their budget. And we'll talk about that as well. Well, there are a few disclaimers I want to run by you. So first of all, nothing in this video is sponsored at all whatsoever. Secondly, there will be two links down in the pinned comment below this video that will link you over to PCPartPicker.com and it will show you these lists and all the parts put together for you. If you decide to buy anything from these links, I do not get any commission or any kickback of any kind from these links. I'm not making any money here. I'm simply doing this to try and help gamers out. Lastly, and this should totally go without saying, but corners were cut in order to achieve this $1,000 PC build. That means these are not the best PC components that you can possibly buy. You can buy components that perform better and you can buy components that look better when it's all said and done, but it's gonna run you more than $1,000. And that was not the goal of this video. So with all of that being said, please just keep all of that in mind as I'm going through these parts. And if you appreciate what I'm trying to do here, please consider hitting that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And if you're new here, consider becoming a subscriber. I would, I would really appreciate it. But that's all the self-promotion I got. I got nothing else for you. Let's go ahead and take a trip over to PCPartPicker.com. Okay, so for the main build coming in at just under $1,000, here's what we have. For the CPU, I chose Intel's i5-11400F. I chose this CPU for a few reasons. First and foremost, it's in stock. Secondly, Walmart has it on sale for only $170, which is super budget friendly. Speaking of being budget friendly, the 11400F comes with a CPU cooler in the box with pre-applied thermal paste. So that definitely saves us some money. The CPU has six cores and 12 threads and can boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. Of course, I checked out some gaming benchmarks and it's a very respectable gaming CPU. Overall, it offers tremendous value Value, so much in fact that when it first released, it temporarily held the crown for the best value CPU. Lastly, at the time of filming, the 11400F is not even one year old. So that means it still has plenty of life left in it. Next up, we have the motherboard. Now, if you don't need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, then you can save yourself some money by going with a lower end motherboard, but this is 2022 and you never know when you might need a feature. So it came in under budget. So I got you a motherboard that has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I chose the MSI B. B560M Pro VDH Wi-Fi Micro ATX. So this board supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. It can support two M.2 drives. It has support for up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It even has support for a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection. Overall, this board gives you so many features for such a low price. This makes it an excellent value, plus the reviews are really good. So this was an easy decision. Next up, we have 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws DDR3 3600 megahertz memory for our RAM configuration. Nothing else to really say about this. I mean, 16 gigabytes of RAM is basically the standard for gaming today. And G-Skill is a good company with a good reputation. The reviews were good on the product and it came in under budget and it was in stock. Next up, we have our storage, which is a one terabyte Intel M.2 drive. We could probably get away with a 500 gigabyte drive for starters, but we had the room to spare in the budget and games are 
super large these days, so I figured might as well go ahead and get a one terabyte drive. Now for the moment everyone has been waiting for the GPU. For the GPU, I chose the AMD RX 6600. Now look, I know this is not an Nvidia GPU, but hear me out. AMD has really come a long way, and with their latest cards like the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT, they have really been getting a lot of praise, and rightfully so. Those cards are honestly amazing. Their adrenaline software is better than it's ever been before, and I even have a couple of friends who own an AMD card, and they swear by it. Now, this card is going for about $460, which is over MSRP, and under normal circumstances, that would be a terrible deal. Given our current circumstances, this card offers a lot of features for a relatively fair price. Again, looking at the market, it is a fair price. Looking at benchmarks from TechSpot, the RX 6600 can run Cyberpunk 2077 on high settings and achieve 1080p 60 frames per second. Cyberpunk is not only a super demanding game to begin with, but it's also an Nvidia optimized title. So this is actually pretty impressive. But for my competitive gamers out there, we can see that the 6600 can run Rainbow Six Siege on ultra settings and achieve an average frame rate of 263 frames per second. It. Lastly, it's worth noting TechSpot also provided a 12 game average frame rate, which shows the RX 6600 averaging 111 frames per second. So overall, this is a card you can buy right now. You can run games at 1080p on high or even ultra settings, and you can achieve frame rates that are more than respectable. Overall, this is a killer 1080p gaming card. Now, according to PC Part Picker, the estimated total wattage for these components is only 281 watts. So for our power supply, I chose a 500 watt ATX PSU by EVGA that is rated 80 plus bronze. Now, this power supply is definitely one of the items where I shaved off a few dollars. So it's not fully modular, but it will get the job done. Technically, if you really wanted to, you could even shave off a few more dollars by going with an even lower end power supply. You could get a power supply that's not even rated at all it's just a 500 watt power supply but i don't i don't really recommend doing that lastly we need a case to hold all of these components i chose a case that is not even recognized in the pc part picker system but i found it on amazon and it's only 70 dollars. the case is the montec air 1000 light atx mid tower case i chose this case not only because it was in stock and budget friendly but it also included some other important components that every pc needs this case comes with three fans that help cool the system System. This case has decent reviews and a tempered glass so that you can see all of your components, which is something I think is pretty cool. Now, obviously, you can pick whatever case you want, but just keep in mind that not every case comes with fans, so you may have to buy those separately, and other cases may be more expensive because $70 is actually pretty cheap for a case. So basically what I'm saying is, if you go with another case, you're probably going to end up over $1,000. Now, as promised, this brings your total to $999.92 before sales tax. Now the second list is a little bit more expensive, but it does offer better components, which ultimately means better performance. So since we have an AMD GPU, it would be best if we could pair that GPU with an AMD CPU to take advantage of smart access memory. So one of the best CPUs on the market right now is the AMD Ryzen 5600X. This CPU will allow you to take advantage of smart access memory, which will definitely improve your frame rate at 1080p. And just like the 11400F, this is a six core 12 thread CPU, but the core and boost clocks are faster than the 11400F. Overall, this is just a better gaming CPU. But unfortunately, this this CPU does not come with a cooler, so I found another budget-friendly cooler with decent reviews that we could use for the build. But we have to keep in mind that thermal paste will now not be included since everything is being purchased separately. However, PC Part Picker doesn't have a place for me to add thermal paste, so be sure to not forget your thermal paste if you go with this option. Lastly, I had to switch up the motherboard since we changed out the CPU. This time, I went with the MSI B550 Pro VDH Wi-Fi Micro ATX motherboard. Because it's a B550 motherboard, it allows us to take advantage of that smart access memory, plus we still get our Wi-Fi and we still get our Bluetooth. But I'm not gonna lie, the Intel motherboard was definitely a better motherboard overall. Keeping everything else exactly the same, this total comes out to $1,119 before sales tax. Well, that's the two builds I was able to put together using PC Part Picker. And like I said in the beginning, these builds are not perfect at all. You could definitely improve them, but it's gonna cost you more than $1,000. When you're limited to only $1,000 in today's 
market and you're also limited to things being in stock today, then you don't really have a lot of options to go with. And I do believe these are the best components you can buy $4,000 that are readily available right now. Let me know in the comments below which one of these options would you go with if you if you had to pick one and how would you change it or improve it in any way if you could. I'm very curious to see what you have to say. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new here, consider becoming a subscriber. I would love to have you. And until next time, E-Rock out.